All right, now let's add some cluster deformers to our cube rig. Um, I want to add three clusters. I want to add one for the top, one for the middle, and one for the bottom. The top one is just going to kind of bend and drag the top around. The middle one will sort of squish and swell up the middle. Um, and then the bottom one will sort of flatten out the bottom part of the rig. So let's go ahead and uh, start selecting the vertices that we want to be affected by the clusters. So for the top one, I'm going to go to a side view here. And I'm actually going to go and turn on unshading. I can go wireframe on shaded, and that'll just make sure that we always see a wireframe of where we are like topology-wise for this cube. Uh, and then I'm going to select the cube, and I'm going to right-click on it, use the marking menu to go over to choose vertex, and that'll allow me to select all the vertices on the cube. But I'm only going to select the very top ones here. I'm not going to select the very bottom row. And then I will go to if you're in My 2016, you'll go to the Animation menu. If you're in My 2017, you'll go to the Ring menu. And I will go to Deform Cluster. And choose the little box just to make sure you have Relative Mode checked. And then hit Create. And you get a cluster that moves everything you assigned to it. And uh, what we want to do now is we want to weight those vertices so that they're not so harsh when you move the cluster. And to do that, what I'll do is I will, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to put the center of my cluster handle in the right place. And since it's the top one, I want to put the handle up at the top. So I'm going to hit the insert key, and I'm going to hold down X, and I'm going to drag the middle. Oops, I don't want to drag rotation, I just want to drag translation. I'll hold down X, and you can see as soon as I hold down X and click it, it snaps. And I can snap it anywhere. It'll snap to grid positions. But in this side view, it'll snap to that top grid position, which put, puts it exactly where I want it, right on top. And then if I hit Insert again, it goes back to just the normal you know, translate, rotate kind of mode. We're not moving the pivot anymore. We're just moving the cluster. And then I'm going to move it over, and I'm going to rotate it around. And what I want to do, I'm actually going to just type in minus 90 so I get a really uh, clear right angle. And then what I want to do is I want to paint the weights of these vertices so I get a nice smooth fall off. The way I do that is I go and I right click on the surface of the object again. And instead of going over to vertex, now I want to go all the way down here and I want to paint. And then I want to go to cluster. And I want to go to cluster one because this is the first cluster we've added. And you can see it shows me the weight map for the cluster. As we didn't select the bottom row, that's black. As we selected everything else, it's all white. Now, while we're in paint mode, I can go over here on the left, double click on the tool for paint, and it'll bring up this uh, tool setting menu. This thing is set right now. You can see opacity is at one, and I'm in smooth mode. So if I flood fill, it's gonna smooth out all of those vertices, smooth out the weights. And you can see it's smoothing the top too, which I actually don't want. But I'm just gonna keep smoothing here for a little bit, and then we'll solve that. So now if I go back and left click again, or right click, sorry, and go over to Vertex, I'll just select the top row here, and I'll go back to my Paint Weights tool, and I will replace, and I'll set the value to 1, and then you can see we get uh, basically the top row 100% to the, to the cluster. And if I go back to selecting vertices again here and select all of these, just the middle, double click on that paint tool again, and flood, I can sort of average it out, because we want to get this somewhere in the middle. And if it's just not feeling right, you can flood it again. You can just flood the whole thing, and then go to smooth again, and keep painting. Keep flooding until it feels like it's doing what you want. And honestly, I think this is probably as good as it needs to be. So I'm going to close this up, and I'm going to grab that cluster. I have to sometimes, if you're in vertex mode like this, if you want to get back to object mode, sometimes it's better to just click back and forth like that, component, object mode, and then select your cluster, deselect the object, and we'll zero everything out. And then we just want to see, OK, now that we have the handle up here, does it behave the way we expect? Does it sort of feel right? It does some funny stuff. 
Um, you have to be a little careful how you control it. But overall, I think it behaves the way we want. So I'm going to zero it back out. Uh, and there's one other thing I want to do. Well, there's a couple of things I want to do. But the first thing I want to do is I want to put a selection handle on there. So I'm going to go to Display. And I'm going to go down to Object Display. Or I'm sorry, Transform Display. And go to Selection Handles. And when you do that, you get this little kind of handle here. And the good thing about that handle is if you go to a perspective view and you turn off in the viewport, you turn off deformers. You don't have to see the little C anymore. You just have this rig handle. And that thing allows you to select without accidentally selecting the box. So it's kind of like having a control handle, but it directly grabs the cluster. So anyways, for now, Let's leave that where it is, and let's add the other clusters, right? So for the next one, we're just going to select the middle vertices, like so. Go again back to uh, deform cluster. We already know that we checked that box for a relative, so I just have to hit cluster again. And there we go. We have a middle cluster. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to kind of scale out and down like this. And I want to see, I want to get a sort of rounded fall off here. So I'll select the object again, go down to paint, cluster, and this time we're going to cluster two. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to double click on that tool and start flood filling it smooth. That already looks pretty good, so we'll just leave it like that. I think that looks about right. So close this up, go back to selection mode, just select the cluster, deselect the object, and then scale it in and out and see how that looks. And if we scale it up, we can sort of get shapes that we like. So I think that looks pretty good. And what I'll do then is I'll go back and set it to one. It's in a good place. So I'm going to turn on the uh, transform display selection handle. And there we go. We have two clusters. We can move both of them and we'll get a little bit of a double transformation because they both have vertices that are uh, affecting you know, or, or are weighted to the both clusters. So I'll explain that in a moment though. Now let's add our last cluster which is going to be at the bottom. I'm going to select vertices again and I'm going to select all the vertices at the bottom. And I'm going to go to uh, deform cluster again. And now we have our, our bottom selection set but I'm going to do the same thing again with hitting insert and then hitting X and making sure I drag the cluster down, snap it to the bottom, hit insert again, and now we have this kind of weird behavior, right? Um, what I really want to do with this cluster is I want to be able to swell out the bottom and create a kind of bulge. So once we have that rough placement, I will do the same thing as before, right click, go to paint, this time we're going to go cluster three, and double click that tool again and flood fill smooth again. Although this time I kind of want to make sure that the very bottom row has a little bit less weight than the one above it. That way we get more of a bulge. So I'm going to go to my selection options and I'm going to right click and go over to vertex. I'm just going to select that bottom row and I'm going to click the tool here again, and I'm going to hit replace this time, and I'm going to drop the value all the way down to zero. And then I'm going to go and grab the opacity and drag that way, way down like so. That way I can slowly take away weighting from this bottom row. So if I start flooding, you can see it's slowly chipping away the weights. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing up top so I get more of a bell shape. So I'm going to select these vertices. And I'm going to actually, what I can do is instead of hitting replace, I can just flood smooth. Oh, I take it back. I guess I do have to hit replace. And then to even this out, I'll flood smooth the middle one a bit. There. I think this is kind of the shape I want. 
right, we'll play with it a bit and see if we need to fine tune it. So I'm going to toggle back and forth between component and object mode again. I'm going to select that bottom cluster and give it a, uh, first let's zero it out or set it back to one. And then we'll give it a selection handle because uh, we put the handle for it in the right place. Go to display, transform display, selection handle. And now let's just play with it a little bit and see what it gives us. Yeah, I think that looks about right. Gives us kind of a squish dropping the weight down. There's another thing I want to do to check all these weights and that is to toggle the smoothing on for the cube. And uh, what Maya does is it can render these things smooth if you just hit the three key and it'll subdivide it actively in the viewport. Um, it's not a true subdivision, it's a render time subdivision. So it's not actually adding anything to the object in terms of weight, it's just smoothing it out at render time. And uh, that's really handy as far as, you know, not having a really heavy rig or a heavy model. So this ha allows us to see what, what I would consider you know, the, the renderable object. And um, we can play with what our clusters will do. And it seems like it's, it's not bad. It kind of gives us the behavior that we're looking for. You could fine tune it all you want. But um, I think for the most part, I'm content with this and I'm going to set everything back to zero and one for scale. So there we go, we've got our clusters. Let's name them appropriately. So this is going to be top CLS. This is going to be mid, oops. Oh man, mid CLS. bottom CLS. So there we go. We've got our three clusters. I'm going to put them in a group. Control G and then name the group CLS GRP. So there are clusters. This will go into the rig group and I kind of want it to follow this offset controller. That way it, it follows the cube because otherwise right now if I move this the cube's going to go away from the clusters. But the clusters are relative, so they'll still deform the object. It's just it's not a really, you know, sensible way to work. It's hard to make it make sense of that. So we'll select that cluster group, and if we look in our um, rig group, there's our offset control. I'm going to middle drag the cluster group right under there. And if I look, there it is. And now if I select that that uh, offset controller, now our rig follows the um, offset. If I rotate the cube around, those clusters are rotating around. So everything is happy and doing what we expect. There we go.